What is going on, everybody? Josh Wilson, and this is the Big Dog Podcast. Got two of my really, really good longtime friends. I would say old friends, but they're aging way too well. We're not and, old. <laughs> and, yeah, I am, though. So we've been friends for a long, long time. So I've got Shannon Edwards and Kristen Campbell, the Coastal Virginia real estate team. Yes, hello. In the studio. What's going on, guys? Not much, not much. We're um, very appreciative to have you, you know, for you to invite us here. Oh, I'm super excited. exciting! We love everything you're doing with the oh, podcast and that's fun. all your brands. <laughs> Slide that money. Super under the excited! Table. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll take care of you guys later. Um, you know, so like a month, month and a half ago, I got to be on their podcast, yes. House of Gains, House of Gains, which is amazing. It's so Thank much you. fun. You guys are killing it with that, and it's, it's really fun. Um, we talked dogs. Yes. Yes. While we were on there and about your dogs and people's dogs and all the dogs and little little tips and tricks that they could do. And, you know, we sat down and they're like, hey, Josh, you know, we'll probably run like 30 minutes, 35. And I think two and a half hours later, I was done, <laughs> I was done talking about dogs and we got out of there. So it was really cool. But we're so excited to, to have you in here. Um, yes. You know, Shannon and I first met like, gosh, I don't even know. Well, when did you start in real estate? I started in 2004. I got my license. So we would have met very close yeah, to that. Right. I guess right when I got my license, pretty much within the first six months I met you. Yeah. Cause you connected with one of my loan officers uh -huh. at the time Yep. and did a good amount of business together with her for a couple of years. Yeah. And, you know, we just connected and we bought and sold and rented and yes. left and 5 million houses over the years. Yes. <laughs> When you guys. were a mortgage so. guy, not the not the dog guy back yep. then. Yeah, yep. that was a different uh, time for sure. Yeah. So, you know, I got scared of it all and ran away. And you guys have, you know, freaking beasts and soldiers. We, we and, found a bunker and, and <laughs> held on tight. <laughs> You're like, oh, what's going on? Pop our head up, look around. What's Is it good yet? On? Are we safe yet? <laughs> That's cool. But, but these two women are incredible. And I'm excited to, like I said, to have you guys here today. Um, guys who are listening or watching, you know, it, They've got an awesome story. They've got an amazing team. Um, They're so focused on positivity and loyalty and community. Um, I just wanted you to hear some stuff from them today. So I'm, I'm going to turn it over to you. I just want you to talk a little bit about, you know, where you guys are from. And yeah. I know you guys went to CNU, but yeah. you're not originally from Hampton Roads, right? Right. Yep, that's right. what brought us here. Yep. So tell us about that. How did you end up at Christopher Newport? So we grew up in Fredericksburg. I say we grew up. We started we lived there from about second grade on. Um, and about our probably we were juniors in high school, one of our principals for our high school came to CNU to be an administrative officer. Oh, okay. And, you know, at that time we were like, CNU what? Who? Like, what is Wasn't CNU? Wasn't as big then. It yeah. Is, it is yeah. I mean, that was in, what, 98? Yeah. So, you know, my parents, we were on this college, like, hey, let's go visit these colleges. And they were like, look, you know, Principal Gray says we need to go by there and just take a look. And me and Kristen were like, we're not going there. It's in Newport News. Where the heck is Newport News? We like, were on our way know, down to Florida, like hitting all these different, like, cool yeah. colleges. <laughs> and so, but literally the second we stepped on campus, I mean, within an hour, we were both, like, sucked in. Really? Uh, yeah. It's, it's the triple effect. Yes. Right? Yes. Like, he, right. like, it was right when he was, like, expressing his vision of where the college was going to go and this friendly campus where everyone smiles at you and nods and those, like, no trash that, anywhere, anywhere, like, beautiful landscapes. Like, they, nobody, they don't even have trash cans. Yeah. Like, <laughs> where yeah, does all so the trash weird. Go? So, when was that, that y'all? That was in 98, and we committed to go to CNU in 99. Okay. Um, so we graduated high school in 2000 and, and came to seeing you. All right. So y'all got, y'all are on the front end of oh, this yeah. massive expansion. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, when University of Virginia broke my heart, who I still give money to, freaking <laughs> A, um, you know, it's <laughs> Jonathan over here, Mr. <laughs> Dual Degree, um, <laughs> University of Virginia. I had on my wall my freshman year my d rejection letter from UVA mm. as motivation. Uh. And I was going to transfer because I went to Christopher Newport uh -huh. my freshman year. Okay. And I spent every other weekend at JMU visiting Devin uh -huh. and her friends and fell in love with it there. So I was like, whatever, UVA, I'm going to JMU. Yeah. But Christopher Newport, Changed. when I was there, they had just, I think, were under construction of like their first dorm. Yes. yes. Yep. When we first committed there, there was one dorm, yeah. Santora Hall. And it was nice. And it was it was nice. Yeah. Better than a lot of the other campuses yeah. we were at. Yeah. Yep. And then they opened James River. Mm -hmm. And when we literally, when I say nothing that was there when we were there is there now. Yeah. 
So true. Like Santoro oh. Hall and the dining hall, maybe everything the else is different. Yeah, the high school is still there when I was there first yes. in high school. I had I did have college courses in the high school. So did I. So yeah. yeah. That's really funny. There. Now it's a beautiful like performance art hall. Center, and yeah. then they just built what's the new thing they just built over there? The attached to it. Art center. The fine arts center. Oh, that's the fine arts center. Yes. So they had the art center. Now Tribble's like, we need a fine arts center. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that dude, I'll tell you, I think I'm a pretty good marketer and salesperson. Okay. Homeboy? Yeah. Yeah. He's amazing. He's incredible yeah, because yeah. what that university has done over the last 20 years. Yeah. Is and phenomenal. not just for the university, but for the city. Uh huh. I it, mean, it, I mean, it, it expands. Is, it is a region yeah. Yeah. now. Yeah. You know, it's a destination. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Well, I think too, like, you know, his ideas and his vision. It, it never wavered. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like from the time that we were there to now, it's still all about, you know, service yep. to your community. It's still all about, you know, making sure that everyone on campus feels welcome. It's about students first. You know what I mean? And so yeah. I think that's huge. The fact that while he has grown in, you know, a lot of things, people and cost and, you know, buildings, the vision is still the same. Yeah. And, and I the, think the feel of it, the feel of the it. culture. Yeah. Oh, I for mean, sure. When we went to JMU, we visited a couple of friends and we would walk across campus and not see a single person that our friends know. And we were mm-hmm. like, wait, you don't know any of these people. And she'd be like, well, no, I mean, I know a lot of people, but I don't see anybody I know. I'm like, when we walked across campus at CNU, it was like impossible, impossible not, to. not yeah. to. I yeah. mean, you knew everybody. And so it was just, it was way more of a small town feel, yeah. you know, and I don't, we just got hooked on it. We were part of the president leadership program, which was a great program at CNU that developed leadership skills. We took yeah. leadership classes. We actually both minored in leadership. Um, and it was just that. And I, and I think, you know, going back to our business and what our business model is and how we live now, a lot of that came from seeing you, you know, that's cool. Their motto of live a life of legacy or, you know, is, is still true in our lives. That's awesome. A life of significance, I should say. Yeah. That's really cool. So, so seeing you, the place that wasn't even on the radar, you just were driving through Yep, Mm -hmm. and it hit you and you both knew it did. This is where we're going to go. Yep. So then uh, we both committed to come to seeing you Newport news. And then what about like six months later, our dad actually got a job transfer from Fredericksburg, Virginia to Minnesota. So we were like, you know, kind of in that point where like, well, we already committed to seeing you. We'll just go there and y'all can go to Minnesota and you know, it'll be fine. So two days after we graduated from high school, basically our parents packed up our house and we moved to Minnesota. And then we came back to Newport News. And honestly, I think that's probably one of the best things that's happened to Kristen and I. Um, while we had each other, yeah. there was no like, hey, we're going to go home for the weekend. Right. Hey, we're going to yeah. send our parents our laundry to do or whatever. It was just survive on your own, you know, get a job and figure it out. We stayed for three most, jobs. Yeah. I think both of us <laughs> had three jobs because we paid for our own school. My parents helped us out when we could. Sure. When they yeah. could. But we worked on campus and off campus yeah. and Einstein's coffee shop. Yep. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I, I thought you were going to say, yeah, we decided to go see you. They got the job transfer. We graduated. They left. Yeah. You know, they just left us here in Virginia. Yeah. But so y'all went to Minnesota for the summer. Yeah, we did. And yep. then came, you know, then in August back. to start yeah. school. And yeah. you've been here ever since. Yeah, we've been here ever since. I married a Pocosa Knight, as I would call it. Um, That's right. So, you know, we live out there now. Kristen married my husband's pretty much one of his childhood best friends. So, so you know, we're like connected for life pretty yeah. much. So and she kids. lives in Seaford. Yep. Two so girls. York County, Pocosin. Yep. Sean and I have two girls. Chris uh, and I have two boys yeah. around the same age, which is kind of crazy too. Yeah. It's fun. I know. It's so cool. what's easier, the boys or the girls? The girls for sure. I feel well, like. you know, I feel like that's going to shift at some point. Like right now the girls are easier, but yeah. once they get like 16 years old. I okay. Feel- so grow like with them growing up though, I could always tell like with that the boys were harder because I'd show up and like Sean's face would just be like, as the boys are like just going crazy, <laughs> like Sean's eyes would tell it all. He would just be like, okay, this is loud. This is crazy. Yeah. And I'm like, Our girls yeah. are pretty quiet. So yeah. it gets a whole new like, level of hype outside. when the boys get there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to tell y'all straight up, the girls are not easier. Yeah. <laughs> so what age does it shift? Or was Logan always the easier one? Oh, Logan's always been just an angel. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Like, and here's the thing that's so messed up is, like, I'm so hard on him. And I think it's because, like, he's always been so easy and so good. Right. Like, my expectation for him has always been so high. So the, the running joke is Kiki will say something or do something, and Logan will just sit back and look at Devin and be like, you would have literally busted teeth out of my mouth. Yeah. Right. If I had just said that. Yeah. He's laughing at Kiki. I would be laid out on the floor. Right. If I had done or said that. Yeah. And the thing is, 
it, he's true. It's true. And it's probably unfair and he'll probably be broken as an adult. I, hope not. I love you, son. Uh, you know, no, he'll be an overachiever. Like he'll just, be great. He's just always been easy. And I think the thing oh, that would actually, I can't say that directly because that wouldn't roll right. He's just always been like a really, really good kid. Mm -hmm. I was going to say he's always been easy. He's just like his mom, you know, with that. He just, he is Devin from mm -hmm. a personality standpoint, um, how he's wired and how he cares for people and um, how he thinks it, it's, he's my wife. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the craziest thing to like see. Harper. Yep. Yep. Then there's Kiki. And she is none of those things. She is brilliant and she is kind and yeah. she is loving, but she is also brutal. Uh huh. She's devastating. She's like you. Um, she will go for the. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, if Logan's it's, her, it's, then it, <laughs> Kiki's you. It is very, very true. And so the joke has always been since Kiki was small, it's like you and your father are the same. Yeah. And so you know how you can unlock your phones with the, the face, uh -huh. the face ID? Uh huh. Well, we unlocked her phone one time and I went into settings and you can do a secondary face. All right. Oh, and so you can know. unlock Noted. a phone with two faces. And so we were joking around. Logan and I set her up and we're like, he's like, you're just like daddy. You even look like him. She's like, no, I don't. Now, this is a 14 year old <laughs> girl who does not want to look like this. No, okay? for sure. And he goes, no, you all look the same. I'm like, Kiki, we do favor each other a little bit. I'm like, let me see your phone. I said, but I can unlock it with my smile. And she's like, no way. <laughs> So I took it, I did the phone scan, it unlocked it. She lost her mind. Tears. Oh Tears. my gosh. She's like, no, something's wrong with it. <laughs> I'm like, no, let me try it again. We did this for a couple of days. She's devastated. Oh my gosh. Devastated. And then she figured out we were screwing with her and oh. it was whatever. But no, she's just a savage. Yeah. But she's 14 going on 28. Right. Logan's 16 going on 17. Right, right. And it's just a very different path but he was never like that wild boy I think I think the difference and I'm sure Logan's great but I have two boys mm -hmm. so Logan had a sister who was probably not as crazy like when my yeah. two boys are separate they're, they're awesome. yeah when they're together it's the like combined. there might as well be oh, there might as well be a 20 person football team right there yeah. it just feels like <laughs> so much energy That's so fun. so you guys you know, work a lot. You have very busy lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, the real estate market is insane. Mm -hmm. You know, what are, how do you guys juggle that? I mean, how do you, cause, Ooh. cause the thing about real estate that's crazy is it's not a nine to five, mm. you know, clients can pop up at any moment, a house yeah. in this market, an opportunity can come about at any moment. Yeah. You know, what are some things, cause we've got a lot of people in real estate, a lot of, you know, entrepreneurs that listen to this, you know, podcast, um, self-employed salespeople mm -hmm. who aren't in traditional work settings. What are some things that you guys do to, to balance that family need? Cause I know that's super important to both you guys, Absolutely. as well as balancing that client experience and being the best that you can for both. Cause I know with you guys less than excellent mm. in any area of your lives, isn't something y'all are willing to accept. Right. So where, yeah, how does that work? We have this huge belief that like balance is impossible. Like you can read it all, listen to it all. Yep. And they constantly tell you, keep a balanced life, you know, or you can have it all. You can have it all. And mm -hmm. the reality is you can, but it just can't be all at once. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, there may be some weeks where you're a hundred percent, 80 hours at work, missing stuff, you know, but you know what, the next week you could be a hundred percent, 80 hours at home. And, yeah. you know, and so we try to find joy in the fact that we get to choose that. Yeah. And so every choice we try to make, we have to realize that that is a choice. Yeah. And so we make the choices based on the what needs is of the day, the needs of the day. You know, we don't set any expectations for ourselves. And I think that's where mm. people get disappointed. They set these expectations for themselves and then they fail. Yeah. And, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, I'm going to do a date night with my husband every week. Well, that's not an expectation I'm going to set because I, the reality is like, I'm going to do it when I can fit it in yeah. and we're going to, it's, it's an important aspect of my life. And so I'm going to make time for it, but I'm not going to try to like micromanage that, yeah. you know? Um, so we, I mean, we kind of just go with the flow a lot and we do, you know, it is hard to balance that at home time. Cause you're right. The phone rings, you know, we want to take care of our clients. We want to answer that phone, but there are some times where we're in the middle of dinner or we're in the middle of writing, reading a book to our kids yeah, or right. whatever. And, you know, I think that 
the fact that our clients know that we're we're you know moms and we're we're very relatable, they understand yeah. that, right? You know, and so setting cool. that expectation, I think, is really important right up front. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, there's. Also the aspect of like, it takes a village. So yeah. like mm -hmm. when our kids were really young, it was much harder. Mm -hmm. And there were days where Shannon would have all the kids or mm -hmm. there were days and I had all the kids and our kids have been in our office. We have pictures of our babies sleeping on mats in the office yeah. floor. Yeah. I mean, they were with us a lot yeah. early on. And as we grew, obviously you make some more money. So you're able to pay, you know, I had a great um, gal, Taylor, who I loved. She was like part of our family who helped us out a lot when they were younger and um, just finding those people that you can rely on that like, you know, when you are at work, especially as a mom, because you have that mom guilt, you know, yep. when you're at work, it's not somebody that's just babysitting. It's somebody that's taking them to Bush Gardens. It's doing those fun things all summer with them, you know? Yeah. And so that was huge for me just to know that they didn't feel slighted, that right. I had to go to work or whatnot. And I think we always like in, in give them the vision of like, look, we're building something for our family yeah. and yep. here's why we're working. And they understand the balance has to be there in order for us to do all of these fun things. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we also, at least I do, I plug our business all the time. I'm like, Colton, you're going to be a floor guy. Like you're, we're going to go flip houses. Cooper, yeah. you're going to do landscaping. <laughs> like, yeah, That's right. We're yeah. just like, you know, we're building something so that they can actually be part of it one day. And so I think they're all a little bit excited yeah. about that. And they understand that they're part of the vision, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and I think that's super important. I, I will also say that like, you know, there were times when, you know, Sean's a firefighter, my husband's yep. a firefighter. And so Kristen would come over with the kids and like, we literally plan, Hey, just have the kids stay the night and let's just like work till. Yeah. We worked a lot of nights on we just different just things. Work till 3am yep. and just like got stuff done. So that way when the kids were home, we did something fun with them in the evenings. And then we just went to work when they went to bed, yeah. Yeah. you know, and that was in the beginning. Obviously now we have, you know, built something that we have the ability to delegate and the ability to, right. you know, trust the people who work for us enough that they can handle it. And so that's huge. I mean, the but, team aspect. Yeah, right. exactly. Exactly. But that's not there early on. No. And no. I think a lot of people get, they, they get jaded in that. They see mm -hmm. us now and they're like, Oh, you guys, you know, you get to take time off. You take four vacations a year, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that's because I didn't take vacation for four years, right. you know, like, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's, there was, there was a mountain to climb yep. and, um, you know, so, it, it's again, there's, there's no balance. It's just like give and take when you can get it, when yeah. you can't. And when you realize something's not getting enough, you are you fill it back up. Yeah, you're self aware enough to be like, oh, shit, like I got to get this back in check. You yeah. Know? And did you guys feel like you noticed, like when you figured out that part and you're like, screw balance, mm -hmm. like balance is out the window. Our focus is on what needs the focus. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to have the self awareness that mm -hmm. you're talking about the ownership of my life style mm -hmm. yep. that if my husband has a need, if my children has yep. a need, this has to wait, Absolutely. work has to wait. And, and now all my focus is here. Yeah. And that's very freeing. Yeah. 100%. Because I agree with you completely. I used to be about the balance piece mm -hmm. and the balance was always. You felt like 90, you were 10, uneasy. Right. 90 career, 10% family early on. That to me was the balance. Yeah. Cause that yeah. kept everything where it needed to be. And that's bullshit. Yeah. Like that wasn't good for the family. And I was always frustrated and I felt like I was underperforming for my family mm -hmm. and stealing from work. Right. You know, cause I wasn't a hundred percent in. Yep. And there's just this illusion yeah. of, I, you guys said it great, like the have it all. Right. I don't feel like I'm lacking anything. And if my wife calls, I'll walk out of here right now. Yeah. Right. And yeah. you guys would do the same. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you should. Yeah. Cause you've built. We've done the years of that lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. And now you, you can control that piece. Yeah. But you ate crap for a lot of years. Right. And even now, there, I mean, right? I think now knowing being over a decade in the business, we know that maybe this week I can't walk out. You yep, know what I mean? Sure. But and we have seasons in real estate, just like most businesses, but like right now we're in the thick of things. It's mm -hmm. crazy. It's busy. But I know come November, December, things are going to slow down a little bit. Yeah. So just knowing the fluctuations in the business and like what's going on with, you know, what clients we have and, you know, just making sure that your family knows that too, like oh, communicating like guys, yes. I know I'm busy right now. I know we can't do these things, but you know, we'll carve out time, yeah. you know, and yeah, we, planning ahead. So there's a goal to look forward to and things like that with the family is important. Yeah. Cause if you don't, if you don't, six what, months it, goes by yeah, yeah, and like, nothing's, wait, nothing's yeah. happening. And when we started looking at the summer, the kids were getting out of school and all that. 
like, okay, when we got to go away, yeah. like, we, we have to do something. Everybody's been cooped up for a year and a half. Well, I've been traveling a lot for work. Us as a unit mm-hmm. haven't really done anything. And so, you know, we had this window of time, the fifth through the 10th, right? where actually all of our schedules aligned. The kids didn't have sports mm-hmm. or tryouts or whatever, or pre-planned trips with family. So, okay, we're going to Florida. We were supposed to be in Panama City Beach, the 5th through the 10th. Little hurricane starts up. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> All my son wants to do is play golf. All Kiki wants to do is sit by the pool. Yeah. And shop. Not and I'm like, we're not going yeah. to Florida. I'm not yeah. risking it. Yeah. So literally, we're supposed to leave Sunday, the, the 5th or the 4th. And on Saturday, the 3rd, we book a trip to Arizona. Right. And I'm like, well, guys, how does Arizona sound? Logan's yeah. like, do they have golf courses? I'm like, a gajillion. <laughs> Kiki's like, like, a pool. Here, let's I'm go like, here. Yeah. yeah. So we went. And none of it was planned. It was all spur of the moment. I mean, we knew where we were staying. We got plane tickets. But for me, the biggest thing that was really important during that time was the experiences. Yeah, building new memories and just, yeah. Right, because I had five days, Mm -hmm. right, where I knew this summer we could be together. Mm -hmm. So it's just experiences. So we took them to the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There were sons were for the first time in 20 years in the finals. Yeah. So guess what Logan and I did? We went to a basketball game. He's like, this is amazing. Yeah. He's snapping all his friends and you know Instagram yeah. and all this stuff. And he's just, his mind's blown. And my mind is blown. That's yeah. nothing I've ever done before. Right. And we'll have that forever. Are we yeah. Suns fans? No. Are we Bucks fans? No. But it was a cool competition. And it was yeah. awesome. That's yeah. Cool. We got to go to a finals game. Yeah. Which is experiences. The place yep. we stayed. It was an experience. I think the other thing too is that teaching our children that things don't always go as planned and that you have to adjust yes. and you have to be um, adaptable is like the, I feel like it's the most overlooked thing as a parent. Like when our kids don't get what they expected, it's like, there's all this like, well, I feel so bad for them. And Oh my gosh, your feelings. I'm like, no, don't feel bad for them. Just adjust, teach them to adapt, you know? And I feel like that's one of the things our parents taught us really well is adaptability, Sure, you know? And I think, you know, again, going to seeing you and having to, you know, learn to just do it on our own with adaptability and all the things. We have this thing in our family where we like literally my hand right now, you can't see me, but my hand is going in like a wave motion and sure. we do that to our kids and they say, go with the flow. Yeah. And it's like, it's that's, good. you know, if something is not happening the way you think it should be. It's okay. Yep. Not like the end of the world, it's not the end of the world. Go with the flow. Like, let's figure it out. You know, yeah. that, so. that's, that's life skills though. And again, yeah. that's by design. That's not accidental. Mm-hmm. That's intentional. And not only are you guys, you know, instilling that in your kids, but you're also Probably instilling that in your team. Uh huh. Yeah. Because you guys will have, I mean, I know you guys win awards and top teams and, yeah. and all this stuff, but not every week's a good week. No, no heck no. You know what I mean? Not every month clients. is a great yeah. month. You yeah. lose somebody and they decide to go with somebody else. Yeah. You've been working with them for six months. Like, yeah. Well, what's yeah. going on? And they can either get in their head about it, right? Or they can transition that energy to that next client, right? Yeah. Or that other referral or, or whatever's coming in. Yeah. But if you get hung up, we just talked about this on a, on a, a an episode that's going to be coming out, you know, getting hung up on the, the big wins where you think you made it and you're celebrating that for so damn long. You start doing all, you stop doing all the things that it took Got to you get there. you there in the first place. Absolutely. And now you're wondering why you're that. right. Yep. Yeah. Because you got to constantly fill the pipeline too, yep. at least in sales. It's like, you know, you could be working your business, but not working on your business. And yeah. That's a big thing in real estate. Yeah. You can't, you can't always just You get the celebrate. cars, you get the houses, you're blowing all those commission checks yeah. and you're, you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I needed to sell more houses to maintain this? Yeah, yeah exactly. well, It's just like that Weird. whole, there's a quote and I actually have it on the board right now at the office and it, um, I know I'm going to mess it up. It basically says we're going to be extraordinary by doing the small things really well. Yeah, it's great. Like, and um, I heard it first on a Dabo Sweeney um, podcast. He said it, he had it like right when he started out coaching Clemson, um, he had it as a quote, like up in the locker room. And, you know, it was the way he cleaned the lockers. It was a way um, they left the locker room. It was a way that they walked off the bus. It's all the little things that make the big things extraordinary. And we kind of believe that, you know, like on our team, there's no like, just random email. Yeah. We have purpose to our emails. We give them content in our emails. It's a very purposeful thing. Those are the little things that everybody emails, but our emails are really good. Right. You know what I mean? And we constantly refine those small things so that our experience, the big experience matters, you know, and it's it's extraordinary. So, um, you know, everything from like our client appreciation events, you know, we do, you know, 
uh, we haven't talked about this at all yet, but we do a lot for our clients. We are big on spoiling our clients, spoiling yeah. the people who are good to us. We want to treat them really well. And so we do client appreciation events and we do an ambassador program that yep. we just like love on our clients and, and try to, you know, just do little things for them yeah. um, that matter. So what are, so that actually is a good segue into one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. Um, you know, you had a social media post, you know, the other day where it was talking mm -hmm. about, and it was really, it was kind of, to me, it was like a, a, a community post, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it was, a challenge, it was, to, most it was a challenge to business mm -hmm. owners who are dumping a lot of money unintentionally, mm -hmm. like intentionally, they know they're spending it, but there's no strategy behind it. There's no, way to measure it you know what through. they're doing yeah. no follow through it's like i'm gonna spend you know three thousand dollars on this ad mm -hmm. in this magazine mm -hmm. what the hell did that do for you right? right you know or or whatever now we're a place we spend a fortune mm -hmm. on pay-per-click and you know facebook ads and, and different things like that but i can tell you every penny every person right every detail well. of it we know exactly what it does. Right. And if something's not performing, it dies to us and we transition those dollars somewhere else. Right. Right. Um, so we are super intentional with it. But the thing that you challenged was, hey, you know, in short of it, build such a organization, mm -hmm. you know, such a, a loyalty, a following to where there's so much of a referral type base of your business. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is you're talking about all these marketing dollars that a lot of people have to spend. You're able to reinvest into the community. Right. Right. And right. help the community. So talk about that. And, and does that play into the, the CNU piece still? Sure. You know, in that, yeah. that character trait? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think our philosophy has always been like treat, like Shan said, treat those, you know, who are giving us business well enough where they want to pass along our name to somebody else. Yeah. But that's not just asking for referrals. Like there's so many, even in real estate, there's so mm -hmm. many like, you know, oh, by the way, like, um, you know, please send your name, my name to your friends and family. But our our thought is that, instead of those marketing dollars, like we said, going into buy leads, buying leads is big right. in real estate. And then you just turn through these cold leads, you're calling, 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 doing a transaction, then forgetting about that person. We try to stay in contact with those people and then really be all about their lives. Yep. So um, the post you're talking about is us supporting a little league team. Yep. And it's not the first time we've done that. But we had um, a client on that team. We had friends on that team. One of our agents had a nephew on a that family team. member. Yeah. And um, the big thing was, is we we are able to spend, you know, $500 on sponsoring this all-star team because we don't have the thousands of dollars a month going out. And, yeah. and I can think it was even an eye opener for us. Like, wow, we're living the vision that we've always wanted, which Amazing. is spending that money where it counts. The, I mean, those kids wouldn't be able to do what they're doing without all the sponsorships sure. and they had a lot of sponsorships. So we're not the only ones, but that's totally part of our marketing plan is we want to give back to the community yeah, because huge. even in real estate, the community is what we're selling, right? Yeah. I'm right. selling Yorktown because I love living here. I love being a part of the community. I love our little league, you know, my boys play in it. So just being able to contribute back to them as opposed to stressing about where the marketing dollars are going is is yeah, really and, awesome. and I will say, kind of going back to what you talked about before, choosing to live in the joy of the small things, mm -hmm. neither one of us find joy in picking up the phone and calling somebody we don't know. Sure. Like it yeah, literally, right. and, and you can listen to 10 different real estate gurus and they say, just pick up the phone, go in like a war room and just like dial, dial, dial. And I'm like, oh God, I want to throw up. <laughs> like, no, you know? And so we choose to... Instead of doing that, because there has to be an alternative, right? If 100%. you can't not prospect, you can't not, you know, try to build your business. And so we just choose to spend time and love on people we love and who love us. Yep. And that has turned into a referral business that generates 100 deals a year, you know? Yeah, awesome. And so it, we find joy in it. And that's the best part is that, like, we don't wake up every day thinking, oh, my God, I got to make 10 calls today. Or, right. oh, my, we think, oh, man, I get to go, like you know, have lunch with this person or we get to have a client appreciation event at the pilot stadium this weekend. Well, we see everybody yeah. that we love. Like, yeah. The, we awesome. love our clients. Yeah. And we also talk a lot about, we don't want to be marketed to in a way we don't want to market to others in a way we don't want to be marketed to. 100%. Yep. So I don't like, you know, people calling me trying to sell me stuff. I don't like people knocking on my door at a random hour trying mm -hmm. to sell me something. So we're not going to do that to other people. Yeah, absolutely. And the only way we can do that is to 
constantly reappreciate the people in our sphere and our and use you know brand awareness on on social media just like you guys do Absolutely. It's, you know just making sure we're there when they need us making sure they understand who we are what we do you know because there's a lot of aspects to our business we're not just a real estate business you right. know so um we try to you know just constantly be there you know with yeah. them that's really cool so you know you started up 2004 mm -hmm. you know in real estate Kristen when did you make the transition to real estate in 2009. All right. I worked in a, um, I worked at CNU for a little while okay. planning events, um, did like graduation and, um, opened the Ferguson center and all of that nice. stuff. And then, um, I worked in medical marketing for a few years after that. Mm -hmm. And then Shannon was, you were a broker. You got the opportunity to be the broker manager mm -hmm. of Duval. Yep. And you were like, I'm going to be training. I'm going to be doing all this stuff. I've got to have someone to cover my team Basically, it's now or never. Yeah. That's pretty much. I, what I she said, said that. I literally is like, either you come or I'm hiring somebody else. So yeah. we got to make this. Choice. I'm rolling down the road. Yeah, right. <laughs> my preference is you. Is you. Yeah. And so, so I you never were thought like, about it. I I'm was out. like, yeah. yeah. I mean, my last that job that I had then, I loved, but I was traveling different cities every week yeah. on a plane every week, and it was you know high burnout. And I wanted to start a family and work with family and build something of my own as opposed to building someone else's business, pretty much and. So I took the leap and been up ever since. That's awesome. <laughs> and then you guys made the transition to Remax at yes. some point. Yep. And at some point you added in a rental. Yeah, side. actually right when we joined Remax. Okay. Um, Duval had a property management division. And so when we joined Remax, we knew that we wanted another avenue to support our clients because yep. the reality was is that when we were when somebody asked us about rentals we just didn't have the knowledge base and the capacity to handle that portion yeah and so when we joined remax i i never forget sitting down with al abbott and i was just like you know i think i want to do this like i don't even know where to start but you know i i, I know the contracts now i want to learn the leases and the property management agreements and and he said whoa 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 and he said let me tell you one thing he said if you're going to do it just make a hire, like hire somebody. Right. Yep. You cannot sustain both. And so yeah. that was he like. He said, if you do property management on your own, your sales side will fail. Yeah. Period. It was only so suck. much time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we had, you know, young kids at that point, And he just yeah. said, make the hire. And we did. We brought on Pam Christensen, who is still with us today. That's awesome. Um, she's actually getting ready to retire out of property management in December. So we have a new um, Amanda Tate who's joining us. Um, she's actually her apprentice right now for like six months, learning and absorbing everything from Pam. Cool. But Pam grew our property management with us from. We had, I think we had like two or three properties to start and oh. now we're up to about 80. So, um, and our goal is never, it was never to be 500 or right. Right. like that, but we basically just use it as an avenue to service our clients. Mm -hmm. So we have clients who bought a house and they're military and then next year they get transferred and they're like, man, I thought I was going to be here three years. I'm only here one year. I right. can't sell it now because I'd take a loss. So we rent it for them, you right. know? Right. So we really just facilitate that with our own sphere and there's agents in the office that, you know, refer business to yeah. us and stuff, but we actually have a really good uh, referral base from other agents because they know how we do it on the sales side yep. and that's carries over to the property management side. And so yeah, that's good though. Yeah. And if you had not made that higher, mm -hmm. if you had tried to run it all yourselves, mm -hmm. now your sales business, not just are your numbers hurting, right. but that experience is so 100%. important to you that you provide right. is hurting. Right. right. And you're going to do two things poorly. Right. Rather than one with excellence. You yeah. know, we just added group lessons earlier this year mm -hmm. we've been asked to do it for eight years yeah we wanted to, i'm like we don't do group lessons right we don't do it and i because i knew i wouldn't do it well right and if i'm being honest group lessons are way easier than the private lessons because the expectations for those dogs and for those clients is way lower right than what we expect from someone going through private lessons but i knew if i if i offered it you'd have to do it good we'd have to do it well and, and maintain the expectation of our brand Yep. I was unwilling mm -hmm. to sacrifice, you know, adding something extra right. just because someone was asking for it. Right. I mean, how many things are you asked to uh, do? All the time. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it dilutes your experience. Right. And that's big for us too, even on the number of sales that we do. Cause mm -hmm. in real estate, probably like every business, you're like, how many, like what's next year look like? What's right. you going to grow? Where, how are you going to grow? And you know, we got to a point where we're like, okay, like, yes, we want to grow, but we can only sustain so much ourselves without 100%. every single client taking a little bit of a hit because we're spread so thin. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's what kind of brought on bringing on more agents. 
Um, so we have two agents now and we're able to like, there's some times where I'm just like, I can't take on one more person. And I love this person who referred this guy to me, but I also trust Rachel, Rachel and Kurt right. so much that I would send that person to them and know that they will instill the culture that we have and how to, how to take care of our clients and all of that. So mm -hmm. that's, that was another kind of shift is being able to relinquish the control, which was hard for me at first. It was terrifying. But it's yeah. terrifying. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's horrifying. And it as we grow, it's the same thing. Like at a certain point, when you're maxed out, and if you're super high drive like you guys are, you guys are strong leaders, you know, you you're focused on the experience. It's not just a transaction for you. Right. More people want to work with you. Mm -hmm. And if you're just like, yes, 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 all those things that made you great are now going downhill. Right. Because you're overextended. Right. So then the only way to do that is you got to figure out how to replicate yourself. Right. And more so and than system. replicate yourself is you create a system mm -hmm. and you figure out what percentage of yourself you're actually okay with. Right. Because it's right. never going to be It's never going to be 100%. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, okay, is 80% of my experience still better extraordinary. Yeah. than the alternatives for people out there? Because yeah. if it is, and you can maintain it, and you can get people, good human beings in, high character, who have buy into your values mm -hmm. and, and what your team is about. Now you can offer those services to more people. Right. Yeah. You know, we could train way more dogs than we do. Right. Yeah. The phone rings off the hook. That's a cool thing. That's great. You were talking about wanting to call somebody randomly. Oh my God, I would hate that. Yeah. That was like my mortgage life. Yeah. You know, right. In the in the beginning, nobody knew who the hell I was. Yeah. So you're just like dialing for dollars. Yep. And during yep. that time, it, everybody wanted it. Right. So yeah. you could literally be an idiot and yeah. do it clearly, you yeah. know, and, and do it. Um, but with great. the dog thing, People are calling us. Yeah. Right. So like when my sales team isn't selling, I'm freaking out. I'm like, yeah. what is going on? Right. This, this is a lay down. They're calling us. Right. Right. They want us. Yeah. The you know, conversion how, rate should be way right. higher. Right. Yeah. It's not like we're just going to the phone. You got a puppy? Yeah. <laughs> I can help you with your puppy. I mean, can you, Do you imagine? Want a puppy? I can get you a puppy. That, <laughs> yeah. I can train that puppy. Yeah, I'll get you a dog. I'll train the dog. This is what it looks like. I mean, that, that would be horrifying. That is not the experience I want for my right. life or for, for my clients, but we can only grow right. as fast as I can develop people that can mimic right. mm -hmm. yeah. our experience. Right. And we've had to change systems. Yeah. And, you know, then the systems are in place and the systems start to replace me. Right. Yeah. And they start to replace you. Yep. So now you have that margin where you're like, oh, I can go away for a little bit with my family. Mm -hmm. Or I can spend this time being creative and thinking right. of new things and growing. Start a podcast. Yeah, yeah. right. Margin. Yeah. Yep. What a weird thing. Yeah, I know. But how long have you been playing this game? Yeah. 17 years? Yeah, yeah. And the interesting <laughs> part about that is like when we say all of that, you know, that is what we've learned over the time because right. we have had those pockets of spread too thin. Yep. Because we have like come out of that and said, okay, that didn't work. We, we were, you know, pulling each other's hair out, like, you know, like just going crazy. What, what can we change? What can we add? What can we take away? You yeah. know, it's a constant evolution. And sometimes people think just because you have a system that, you know, just because you have the system doesn't mean that system doesn't always change. Yep, it always 100%. evolves. It always, you know, even when you well, get because a new the employee, market changes, the too. market changes, yeah. employees change. And then, so that system may work better you know, a different way for that employee. And so it's never stagnant. Yep. And I think people think like growing this business, all of a sudden it just stops and just runs. And yeah. you're like, oh, it doesn't really do that. You yeah, know, it doesn't. It's constant hands on. It's constant. You know, what can we do better? And like, you know, Pam in my office and a couple agents, like they know, like, I know that problems happen. I know that situations happen. But when it happens, even if it wasn't our fault, even if we did all the right things, right? I'm always like, what could we have learned? 100%. What what do we need to change to make sure this doesn't happen? And sometimes that answer is not apparent right away. Yeah. Sometimes that answer is, you know, nothing. I think we did good, but the question always needs to be asked, you know? Well, that's why you're finding success through three, four very unique markets over the last 17 mm -hmm. years though. Yeah. Because you're not trying to do the same things in 2021 right. as you were in 2014, 15, and 16. Right. Or, yeah. you know, or 2004, 2005, 2006. Right. The game that was being played in 2009, 10, and 11 very different than the very game being played different. today. Mm -hmm. And if if you were just sitting back and doing whatever, mm -hmm. you guys wouldn't be nearly as successful as you are now. Right. Your team wouldn't continue to grow. 
your referrals wouldn't continue to to flourish. Right. Yeah, we'd because be you're miserable. you're playing you're playing the wrong game. Yeah. And 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 so many people get sucked into I'm killing it. Right. Yeah. You better keep paying attention. Yeah. It's and if you don't you self reflect, if you think you're the man, you're the woman, you know, you're the standard bearer mm-hmm. and just settle, it's it's gonna be a rude awakening. Yeah. You can't survive. And right. I think anybody, for the most part, unless there is just some financial windfall sitting off to the side right. and they're doing a career as a, a hobby. hobby. Mm-hmm. Right. I might sell a house this month. Maybe I don't. They like to look at houses. Yeah. I look, <laughs> I, I look at houses from time to time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go get some snacks at the open house. Yeah. You know, I'm filling my time. And there are those there people. There are. In that, absolutely. Is, and that's yeah. cool. Hopefully they're loving life and yeah. thriving and, and doing great. It's a different uh, mentality mm-hmm. and there's different goals with it. And so they don't really have to change anything. Right. There's no worry to it. But I just think it's incredible what I've seen from you guys over the years is just this this constant level of positivity, mm-hmm. raving fans, mm-hmm. and and growth. And you've been able to build a team beyond yourselves and bring other people into that that ecosystem. Right. 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 And they're thriving and happy and doing well. And you created opportunity. Yeah. Right. And that's amazing. I, yeah. just, I just love it. I think I that's it. the part I love most about being a team too. Is just like they kind of become our family. Like you know, Pam. Gosh, she's been with us for so long. Now it's like we think about her retiring, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like what are we gonna do when we yeah. don't have Pam around? You know, yeah. she's gonna still do sales. Yeah, bit, she's but. gonna kind right. of transition into sales and do that. But yeah, and I think you know that that positivity piece is so huge, and one of our core values is just be positive, like simple, yeah. be positive. And that's so hard in real estate. I mean, you remember what it's like. It's like a constant roller coaster. But just knowing that like if you have this negative outlook on life, if you have this negative outlook on the transaction, nothing is gained by that. Right. Yeah. Literally nothing is gained by that. And we have we have agents we work with and it's like the second you get on the phone with them, you know, it's just like a siphon of your energy. You yeah. know what I mean? Because they're just so negative and it's like all the Doomsday and worst blah. case oh, yeah. is taking I'm over the world. I'm losing you. Your phone's breaking yes. up. I don't <laughs> click. You know, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, even in the last year with, you know, there's a lot of big changes in real estate, a lot of big tech in real estate, a lot yeah. of big companies coming in, Zillow, you know, all these companies. And our outlook is always the same. They can never service our clients better than us. Yeah, we impossible. have to have that belief that we are the best person for our clients to use. Yep. And as long as we have that and know that like no one will will care more for them. No one will, you know, work harder for them. It doesn't matter what company comes into the area. Right. It doesn't matter what new technology comes out. It doesn't matter Zillow's getting their license. They will never love our clients as much as we do, yep. ever. That's it. And so that positive piece and that encouraging piece with each other, especially our, our agents, when you're starting in real estate, it's, it's a tough business, you know? And so giving them that positivity and that smile when they walk into the office, it's not a, how many deals did you, you know, how many people did you call? How right. many, you know, it's, it's a, it's a more loving environment than that. Um, yeah, that's cool. But you're focused on the values. You mentioned core 100%. values. Mm-hmm. The vast majority of businesses don't have core don't values. Don't have them. Yeah. Individuals surely don't have core values. Right. Everyone said, well, I have values. I'm like, do you? like, okay, well, what are they? Right. Right. And yeah. well, well, I, you know, I I'm put my shopping cart away. Yeah. <laughs> I don't leave it in the middle of the parking lot. Yeah. Like, well, that's a really good trait. Yeah. You know, but like, is that literally like how you live your life? Right. You know, with that type of intentionality right, right. and purpose? Well, it's or, you know, interesting what is it? that you say that too, because like a lot of um, places you go, it's like the core value is like honesty, integrity. Yeah. And you're like, well, no shit. Would you say you weren't? Right, like, right, right, right. <laughs> what yeah, would you say? Yeah. Not honest, not, I have no integrity. Like, bags. you should, you yeah. know, it should, those are, those should those be are givens. Yeah. Like, of yeah. course, you know, and so, you know, some of ours are like speak with clarity, impact, and empathy. Yeah. Like when you speak to people, you need to be clear, empathetic, and in care and significant when yeah, you speak, cool. not just talk to talk. Right. You know what I mean? Um, you know, so there's there's be a box things. breaker. Be a box breaker. One. Like, you know, God, there's no freaking box. 
what do you mean stay in the box or be outside the box, whatever? Right. Just freaking got a get problem. Rid of it. What's the solution? Yeah. Even if it's yes. outside the norm, you know? Yeah, like talk to me about the problem one time. One the time. The next time we talk, the next time we get together, I do not want to hear about the same problem twice. Yes. Yes. Unless it's a solution you're telling me. Right, for right. For that problem. Don't yep. keep talking about the same problem. Yeah, that drives I love me that. Nuts. Oh my God, I love That's that. That's so crazy. So, so we had we have a list of our core values and Shannon, <laughs> Shannon is like infamous for like making sure that, you know, because you want to, you want your team to have buy-in and we talked yeah, about sure. how important it is to have a team that reflects what you believe and. So our team meetings a lot of time revolve around like Shannon coming with just a blank piece of paper and making everybody write down our core values. Yeah. That's good, and though. it's so funny. We're like, oh, test time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's so good because it is. It's really like how we live our lives and how we should treat our clients yeah. and each other. So it's a big part of our business is core values. Like a week or two ago, we had something pretty crappy happen just with a, a new trainer coming on who, you know, left they were with us for 48 hours mm. i mean that that was it mm. after all the training mm. the whole process everything 40 hours just done and uh, my head trainer jacob made handled it like a pro you know really went out of his way um you know a sunday night late he didn't end up getting back to like three in the morning because mm. he did all the steps necessary to take care of what needed to be done right and so the next morning i just posted something on our team page just showing some love to jacob honor to jacob about how this is so incredible. Like it, it, like this is, if you guys aren't spending time with him, you're doing a disservice to yourself. Right. You know, the guy had already had a 15 hour day and then ends up X, Y, Z, all these things. And, you know, I'm singing his praises, trying to hype him up, all this stuff. I know he's going to be dragging, mm -hmm. you know, on Monday because of the day and the night that he had. And he responded with one word and it was all capital letters. And it just said dogs. And dogs uh, are... That just gave the, me the chills. Yeah. Like Dogs, if you break out, I don't... I'm an idiot. Maybe it's acronym. Acronym, I don't know. Yeah, acronym. yeah. But that lays out our core values cool. and what we are about as an organization. And that's where I'm like, God, you're crazy. Because I worked for a long time trying to figure out what our core values were about. Right. And first I had to figure out what I was really about. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then when I did, I started laying on. I'm like, holy crap, this is dogs. Yeah. This is, this is dogs. That's And cool. he just responded with dogs. He didn't say, thanks, Josh. He didn't say anything. I, I emotionally, I was just right. Yes. Yeah. I was like, oh, you get it. He you gets get it. That. He really yeah. gets it. I already knew he got it because he did the things that he did. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. But then he modeled for the entire team, not just in his actions, but then with how he responded to the accolade. Right. Yeah. And it yeah. all just came back to what we're about. And that's I'm like, so that's cool. freaking crazy. Yeah. Even in the midst of something Chaos. bad, it turned out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I just thought that was amazing. And I think that's something that I wish I had done a long time ago, started mm -hmm. developing. And we're going to be better. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I just think it's something that I wanted to recognize to you guys that I think it's amazing that that is something that you instill yeah. and something that you test them on and yeah. that you're always preaching about because you're creating that um, that culture. Right. Just like you, All by design, created y'all's lifestyle yeah. and what you wanted to be. It's not by accident. I mean, yeah, I like, Kristen always tells you, like, I have a tattoo. I, my first tattoo says you are exactly who you want to be. Yeah, that's awesome. And like that is to a core what we believe. Like if there's something about your life that you don't like, the only person who can change it is you. Yep. And so with our team, with with the way we grow it, with it has to be intentional. Yeah. Like it, it, it is the way you want it to be, you yeah. know? And so. I don't know if you guys listen to the podcast, this podcast, but you should because that thing you just talked about, I got one that's coming out that, dives into that a little yeah. bit more that statement you'll love it okay not to toot my own horn but yeah it, it's pretty good yeah. so look i want to honor y'all's time all right i mean you guys i know how busy your guys lives are right now what's going on and you came in here to sit down with me and i just i appreciate it so much we love it but i i want to ask one question of both y'all and i really i think it could just be very um influential on someone thinking about or who is new mm -hmm. to the real estate business because right now, it's so shiny. Oh, yes. it's so it's shiny. so shiny. Yeah. And I mean, I see people nonstop leaving great careers. Just got my license. You know, I just got my <laughs> license, all this stuff. And for me, it's always like PTSD. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, what's going on? And we had lunch a couple months yeah, ago. Yeah. And we were having mm -hmm. conversations. And, yeah. you know, but, you know, to two people sitting across from me right now, who, in my opinion, are killers in this game. And not just, I mean, there's a lot of people sell way more houses. Yeah. Than you. yeah. Like, like, I know you're learning every day and all those things still, but you have built a life. Mm -hmm. You've built a great career, an amazing reputation. 
right. an amazing life for your families. Right. You know, and so what are some things besides all the awesome nuggets you've dropped since we've been talking? Mm-hmm. But for that brand new person thinking about making that change or has just made that change in the last couple of months, you know, what would you say to them to that, you know, six, 10, 15, 20 years from now? They can they're like, life yeah, they this love. is this is a life I love, not just a shiny, shiny right. object I chase right. because it's all I see on the news. Right. I guess for me, like what I would probably just tell new people is it is a grind. Like there, it is not easy. It's worth it. But so many people say, you know, there's and we talk about balance, but there's a lot of people in real estate that have been in a long time and they say like, don't pick up your phone after six o'clock, you know, like set boundaries, all of these things. My, my life as a real estate agent, isn't that like, I answer my phone at eight o'clock. Like if I'm in the middle of something, I'll shoot him a text real quick and say, Hey, I can't talk right now. I'll call you back in 15 minutes, but just keep in mind that you're dealing with the person's biggest investment sometimes in their life in your job is to guide them through it. And so that is a grind that is 24 hours a day. Sometimes it is nights, it's weekends, but it's all worth it. And so that whole balance thing, I think I would just kind of reiterate to them that there will be weeks that are really, really hard, but there's also reward and benefit when you work hard. And just to kind of keep in mind that it will all come back around, you Mm -hmm. know? So, I mean, I think sometimes people get in and they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know people were going to be texting me at nine and 10 o'clock at night. (laughs) They will be, even though you tell them I'm, I go to bed at eight, they will be texting you at 10 o'clock. And I'm not saying you have to respond at 10, but that's just the people's nature of when they're in the, that phase of life where they're buying or selling, it's stressful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you have to be good at managing, you know, your own life, but also making sure that you're there for your clients. Yeah, that's so. awesome. And kind of, this isn't mine, but kind of to touch on hers is you have to learn to emotionally separate their stress from yours. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's, that's, I think a lot of people fail in real estate because they absorb the stress of someone else. Yeah. And while you have to be able to take that stress and manage it and flip it and find a solution to it and give it back to them, you can't take it in you. You know or even I mean? affirm their stress. Like right. you really right. don't want to say like, you know, affirm that, yes, I'm stressed too. Like yeah. there's so many problems that we work out without even telling the client, like they don't need to know yep. all of the things. And I always say like, if my client at the end felt like it was a really great, easy process, that's amazing. Yeah. Like, because yeah. it really wasn't normally behind yeah. the scenes, but yeah. that's our goal is to relieve that stress from them. And when they're stressed, calm them down. Mm-hmm. So. So I think mine would be um, figure out who you want to be in your business early. Like spend the time, um, you know, figuring out your brand and figuring out all of that. Because sometimes people just dive right in and just it's like day by day by day. And I think like really having some sort of idea like, okay, do whatever niche you want to work or, you know, pick a few things. And then work those things really well. Yeah. So like, um, just to give you an example, like, you know, when I first started, I was right out of college. So I hadn't even bought a house yet. And right. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to go after these people that, you know, are 40, 50 years old. They own a $700,000 house. I'm going to go after the people my age, like yeah. first time home buyer, you know, and that's what I've really worked. And I just grew that. Um, so figuring out who you connect with and like developing that sphere really early is really important. If they're a new agent just coming out of a different job, they have a lot to do to change the image in those people's mind of, hey, you know, she was a teacher. Right. You know, no, they need to think of you. Hey, she's a realtor. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that is really important to dive in. And then on top of that, this is like a huge pet peeve of mine right now. There are so many people in this industry that have just come into the industry that don't know the frigging contract. Yeah. Like if you are new and I had to do this, Duval, Chris Duval used to literally, I had no business, nothing. I wasn't doing anything. I'd show up at the office every day at eight, leave when they left at four or five. And he would just be like, write this contract, view this contract. Here's the situation, write this contract. You have to know the contracts you're getting people to sign. Yeah, absolutely. So whether you have business or not, you still have business to do. Sure. Oh, that's that's good. Learning and growing. And I mean, when we get contracts on listings and they're not filled out correctly. And yeah. then I look up at the person's, um, you know, MLS number and they've done three deals this year. I'm like, you had plenty of time. <laughs> right. right now nothing, is the time right to learn now all that is stuff. the time to yeah. refine the craft because when you get busy, there is no time for that. 
Yep. The client service takes over. The inspection negotiation takes over. All of that. So just learn it from the get go. Yeah. You know, um, that would be. I mean, it would just be like you sending somebody to train dogs and them having no idea about right. dog temperament. Never touched a dog. Like never. right. Like, no, you can't do that. You can't go, you yeah. can't go list a house or sell a house if you don't know the, the sales paperwork right. or the or the laws or the disclosures. You have to learn that. Yeah. It's way overlooked in this in this world. Whether you have business or not, you have business to do. Yes. That's freaking awesome. I love that. And that I say that too. Yeah, you said that. That ain't me. That's you. That's all Shannon. I mean, that's that's huge. And that applies to anybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, that applies to any industry. That applies to relationships. That applies to everything because if you're not in a relationship and you want to be in a relationship, you got work to do. You got work. Yeah. You got sure. work to do. Yeah. You know, if you're new into a business, you're not new into a business, busy or not. Yeah. You've got work to do. You can yeah. always be getting better. And I just think, I think that statement speaks so clearly to what you guys are about, who you are. Um, I, what's the best way for people to connect with you guys to follow you? You got the podcast, social yeah. media. What's what's some I good mean, ways? I think our, both of us are really big on Facebook. Um, you know, you can find me Shannon Dushman Edwards and Kristen Dushman Campbell. Um, and then our Instagram accounts. I'm Homegirl and Heels, and, and I'm C Campbell Crew. Yeah, and so that's probably the best way to connect with us and just follow our journeys and that's what awesome. we're doing. We'll put links to that in all the comments and the posts and stuff. And Great. Shannon's shoe game has always been yes. <laughs> On point. She like, was nine months pregnant in heels. Like it, that's how. Oh how my god! Do you remember when we saw the house? This yes. is so funny. Quick story. <laughs> uh, we were we were at a home inspection at one of Josh's houses that he bought. Yeah. And randomly, my favorite blue <laughs> Nine West heels, the heel just broke off. Yeah. I was walking oh, through yeah. the kitchen, yeah. and it just broke off, and yeah. I was devastated. Yeah, you were shook. Yeah, <laughs> I was so mad. And then literally at closing, they give me a gift card to get new heels. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. You guys are amazing. That's when we knew we were all meant to be. Yes. So, no, you guys are amazing. I can't thank you enough yeah, for taking for the time. Us. You guys have been a huge, huge, huge part of our lives and our stories and, and good moments of our lives and not so great moments of our lives. And um, you guys are just two of the realest people I've ever known in my life. And, um, you know, a handful of very small group of people that are I'm still a part of my life from a whole nother life, lifetime yeah. ago. Yeah. And I, I just, my family loves y'all and we appreciate you so much. Everything you've always done to us guys. If you're listening, if you're watching, you know, definitely follow these ladies on social media and what they're doing. If you're a new realtor getting into the business, particularly uh, pay attention to what they're doing because they're doing it right and they're doing it well. And if you want to win, you pay attention to winners yeah. and you do the work. Okay. There's a lot of people that will put noise Amen. in your ear. Pay attention who's do, to those who are doing what you want to do. All right. Mm -hmm. So do the work guys, leave no doubt. And we'll see you next week on the big dog podcast. Thanks, Thanks Josh. Thanks, guys.